Hi, this is Simon Phillips, and the very clever chapter in all these cartoons is Simon Elinas. Welcome to a very short history of networking. Human beings have been networking since the dawn of time. It helped them overcome some major problems. Each day, Rocky Red would set off to hunt and kill for his very survival. It was a dangerous and often fruitless task, as some of the competitors in the game of life were a bit bigger and better armed. Unknown to him, Boulder Blue was having similar issues. His hunting skills were pretty limited anyway, and most nights he returned home with no food for his family, no matter how hard he tried. Even his artwork suffered. You try painting a cave with an empty stomach. Most networking happens by happy accident, and so it was when Rocky Red and Boulder Blue finally met at the watering hole one evening. They shared their stories of failure and the lack of success that day. They exchanged a few grunts and then did what all good networkers have done ever since, exchanged tablets of stone. Their names and professions were proudly carved out, Rocky Red, Hunter, and Boulder Blue, Gatherer. Several weeks later, having exchanged quite a number of grunts, they met again and decided they would team up to see if it brought them greater success. Working alone had not worked out brilliantly for them. Could collaboration deliver better results? Pretty soon they honed their skills and their teamwork paid off. And that night, to the relief of all concerned, the very first networking party was held, with enough food for everyone. Rocky and Boulder decided it would be a good idea to look for a few extra people and found themselves at the head of a small tribe that would regularly meet to share knowledge and ideas that became vital to life. They began hunting in packs that were big enough to defeat even the biggest prey. In short, they were stronger together than they were apart. As primitive tribes continued to grow and develop, their societies grew even more complex. Spartans, Greeks and Egyptians formed the first massive networks. Naturally, as human beings began to live together in bigger cities, ideas and philosophies grew, leading at first to thoughts of domination and power. And then a lot of weird stories called myths. Plato even preempted Facebook, saying, Wise men speak because they've something to say, fools because they have to say something. Thankfully, the Greek networkers also gave us civilization, democracy, and a bunch of other helpful ideas too. Then came the first master networkers. Those clever Romans realized that if they didn't kill everyone, they could actually enlist them as members of their network of armies. Soon Gauls, Spaniards, Goths and Celts became part of the first truly international network. However, the glue between them was fragile, and the walls of Rome soon crumbled, plunging the world into the Dark Ages. For those of you who don't do history, that's a bit like the internet crashing. The darkness soon evaporated, and bold knights set out on crusades and voyages of discovery, and not a few struggles, developing the first international trade networks. Meanwhile, one of the largest networks, even to this day, Christianity, was spawning offshoot groups left, right and centre. Like other networks, before and since, the Christian networks were led by charismatic individuals who were great at after-dinner speaking. In the political arena, networking was seen as a solution to affairs of state, with kings and queens of many countries keen to promote peace with inter-family marriage agreements. The outcome of all this regal networking was reduced political and social unrest, and no doubt a lot of eating and drinking. After all, most of the best deals are done at the bar. Although I'm not sure everyone thought it was a good deal, especially the newlyweds who didn't have translators on hand 24 hours a day. Moving on, more innovation was needed to maximise returns, and many of these enterprises were guided by the networks of business owners in guilds and associations that still exist today. However, 
some people still don't seem to understand that working together is far more productive than working against each other all the time. And international political networks work hard to maintain at least some semblance of peace. Today, we are in a digital age, and the entire world of networking can be accessed through a computer or a mobile phone. We can connect and build global relationships 24-7. Who knows when networking will go next? The ever-increasing flow of digital data beyond the Earth's atmosphere could go absolutely anywhere. I wonder what our closest neighbours make of our emails, status updates and tweets. Maybe we'll find out soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed this very brief history of networking. For a slightly more serious look at how to build your networking skills, online and offline, check out the complete guide to professional networking and join in the conversation at Networking Not Working on YouTube, Facebook and hashtag Networking Not Working on Twitter. See you there.